show that he is a very good boxer. In this particular fight, you see his the combination there trying to pin Marvel Studio in the ring, then getting him on. Hello, HTV boxing fans. We are privileged to have in our midst today the reigning Ghanaian flyweight champion. Now, this boxer is unique in so many ways. He has a fight coming up this weekend, and we will talk about that. But we will also talk about what is unique about him. You don't want to miss this. This is one on one on Ace TV Boxing. Welcome back. So in this interview, we're going to talk a bit about of the the background of the boxer, where his career has been and where it is now, what we expect from him this Saturday. Without much ado, and without much delay, our guest today is Mohamed Ni Ayikwe Aite, also known as the Golden Star. Now, his name sounds familiar to many Ghanaians, but I'm sure not so many outside Ghana know of him. But today, we will get to know him. Mohamed, welcome to HTV Boxing. All right. Thank you. All right. So before I forget, how did you get your name, Golden Star? All right. First of all, I would like to thank God Almighty for these great uh, events. Uh, I also like to thank my manager, Hedwin Niodate Evans, also CEO of Winbase Promotions. Also, I would like to thank my head coach, also Gevalote, at the back of me. I would like to thank all my fans around the world. Uh, and for me to come up, um, I think I start with the name way back is Golden Golden Boy, but uh, now it's go uh, it's Golden Star. Yes, and you know I actually had to correct it because. When I checked your record on um, Box Rec, it says Golden Boy. But then when I saw you, I was looking at your Facebook messages. Some boxers and some other fans were referring to you as Gold Star, Golden Star. So I'm glad you are making that clarification for me. Otherwise, I thought I was going to make a mistake calling you Golden Boy. <laughs> yeah. So it was Golden Boy before it became Golden Star. Why they change? Okay, in boxing, in world sports, gold is the uh, ultimate price. So I choose to uh, make my name as the gold because I always see myself as the ultimate. So that's the the main reason for my for my golden. And the star is all over everywhere. So golden star is supposed to get everywhere. Nice, nice. So golden star, and let's not forget Ghana is also the star of Africa. So it all it all um, comes together. All right, let's go right into it. So I did some research about you. I mean, I I knew about you before um, this coming weekend, but I had to go look at your stats. You have a record of seven wins with an impressive knockout rate of seven to one percent. And you're also one of few f um, flyweights in Ghana. I want you to tell us about your journey. Where did you grow up? How did you come become a boxer? And then how did you get where you are today? All right. I was born and raised in a small city called Jamestown, Accra, and where there has been a lot of um, great potential champions. And as I was growing up, uh, I was looking up to them and I see myself as one of them to become as a great, a great boxer in the future. And, and secondly, I, I start my, I start my journey from a juvenile and I was a juvenile boxer and I came to the amateur level also. Uh, I've been also in the national team. Uh, I was a former national silver medalist and before I turned pro at the age of uh, 17 years. And my determination and my focus is to be the youngest champion in the world. So that's where my manager also is guiding me through. Wow, I wow, didn't I actu didn't... actually know you were you were um, a national medalist even in the amateurs. So that's that's new for me. But that's why we do this so that people get to know our boxers and including myself. I'm I'm pretty new to Ghana boxing, so I, I'm learning a lot about our boxes. Now, one of the unique things about you is there isn't a lot of flyweights boxes in Ghana. How has this affected your development? Do you think it has been a problem trying to get fights and all that because there just aren't any many in Ghana? 
All right, um, we have a lot of flyweight boxes in the amateur divisions, and I've had um, and I have I've had a major um, contest in the amateur level before I came to the professional. And the professional also the the amateur boxes there some also came to the professional. So I fought best of the best there in the amateur, and the same in the professional level in the in Ghana. And I'm the current national flyweight champion. Okay. So, which of your bouts so far is your most memorable? Why? Which of them do you remember, and why is that? All right, the, the last but one fight was very memorable fight for me. Um, uh, I went to a two rounds, and it wasn't that uh, easy for me. But with God, I secured a victory on that night with a formidable opponent. Who was that? Who, who was that? Isaac Kwe, a former a former flyweight champion, is also a former um, a Commonwealth contender, a former WBO African contender flyweight. Uh, Isaac Kwe, I fought him for the national, the vacant national flyweight title, and God secured me the victory on that night. Wow, I mean, it makes sense why that would be your memorable opponent. Yes, he was a very strong opponent with all those titles he has won, and I'm pretty sure that set yourself ready to be noticed once you you beat him now let me I'm, this is this is this part of the, of the of the interview is very important and dear to me because we are going to talk about some of your colleagues in ghana in terms of boxes now there aren't a lot of boxes in ghana who with your um um record at this stage will get opportunity to co-feature and about and headline about in the united states at this point in their career how did this come about and i think this one i will have your manager actually speak on it <laughs> because he, he probably did all that how, how did you how did you manage this uh, oh my goodness so um we, we we've been working with mohammed since he was 13 14 years of age and even at that early stage we had a goal and that goal was to was for Mohammed to be one of the youngest if not the youngest um world champion so at the age of 13 14 um we started instilling into him that winning mentality that winning mindset um to you know keep him focused on the path of um uh, being a world champion so everything that we do we actually take our time to do it we pay attention to detail you know we 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 put our everything in everything that we do. Do you get it? So by so doing, we 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 were able to get the attention of um, other promoters and other managers in the game. Basically, it's us just putting our best in everything that we do. And I believe once you put your once you put your best in anything that you do, good things will come your way. I agree with you, and I think that should be the message that's going out there for other boxers like Mohammed that are coming up. You have to put in your hard work. You have to do your best. You never know who is looking, who is going to give you that opportunity. So don't do things in trying to secure something right away. Just do it. If you're a boxer, just box. Take your training seriously. Take your whatever you need to do seriously. You never know who is looking and who is going to give you an opportunity. I'm pretty sure if um, if um, um, when, I should say when, Mohammed secures the victory on Saturday, the opportunities are going to be very big because I, I know one of the networks that it, it will be shown on here in the United States and it's a very public um, network. A lot of people watch it. So he'll be noticed by someone and the opportunities is, is going to be in, in abundance. So if, if, if you are doing what he's doing in Ghana, if you're a boxer, take it seriously. You never know who is looking. That is the message that the manager was saying he did what he had to do and the opportunity came so mohammed now let's talk about your fight coming up this weekend your opponent um Gerono bores of the philippines is the most experienced fighter compared to you and as you know experience counts in the ring how has your preparation been since um you heard of whom you were fighting and then once you talk, I, I, I would like to bring coach in also. How has your preparation been towards this fight? All right. 
how I think my preparation, I, I was preparing far ahead. I was preparing way back. So uh, as we hear the uh, the venue, the fight is supposed to come on uh, at Dubai, Coca-Cola Arena, uh, fighting a Tanzania opponent. And uh, due to the death of their their elder, uh, elder, so the fight was postponed. So since the fight was postponed, I, I was still preparing. We are still preparing. My my team is there with me. We are still preparing, learning a lot. So as we hear the new um, date have been set, we think no, now we are good to go. So uh, I think our preparation is very solid. Very, very Co solid. Co Coach, Co I want you to come in here if you can get closer. You can hear me. All right. How how what are, what kind of things have you been taking um, uh, Mohammed through? knowing who he's fighting. You know, Filipinos take their boxing seriously. They don't joke around, whether veteran or new, they don't joke around just for the pride of their country. What are, what are some of the things, at least, that you know about this boxer that you've been taking Mohammed through in, in, the, um, in, in, the, in the gym? First of all, I thank God Martin God to give this opportunity to my boss and I thank uh, CEO of Wimbis also. We train a lot in Ghana, but we watch um, Mani Pacquiao fight. As you are saying, the Philippine bosses are very dangerous. So we watch Mani Pacquiao fight, then we do better things. Okay, so it looks like you you had to study how the Filipinos fight and then, and then compare it with this uh, Bores. And hopefully um, uh, we take... You, you you've done you've corrected any things that you have seen that Mohammed needs to do, and then hopefully that brings us the victory. Now, um, what should Mohammed? What should fans, boxing fans, and then your fans, and then Ghanaians in general, expect from you come Saturdays? Because you know, you are essentially representing the whole of Ghana, and it's not just your gym or win base or your your manager or your your trainer or you are representing the whole of ghana and you are you are fighting against not a ghanaian but a filipino another boxing country just like ours there's a lot on your shoulder i don't want you to feel like it's a burden but what should we expect from you um this saturday all my fans around the world ghanaians everyone should expect victory we are coming home with flying colors uh, victory huh <laughs> In any particular round, are you trying to stop him at any particular round, or um, you are just going to do what you've done and hopefully come out with the win? Do you have any round in mind? No matter how the situation will be, victory is coming to our side. Yeah. Whether, yeah. whether odd or good, the thing is. <laughs> <laughs> I will take it. Even if it's round, round 13 or 14, as long as you bring the victory, we would yeah. take it. Right. So, Edwin, uh, this is for you, um, manager. For some of us who may want to watch the fight, right? Where where is the fight being shown? How can we watch? Because I know okay. once we we post this interview, people are going to write under the comment. How can we watch? How can we watch? All um, right, brilliant. So the fight you can watch Mohammed fight live on www.redemptionppv.com. So I'll spell it R E D E M P T I O N P P V dot com. Watch Mohammed fight live at www.redemptionppv.com. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, before before we go, this uh, is a short interview. Um, finally, Mohammed, what advice? And then I will come to coach and then I'll come to um your manager, Edwin. But as a boxer. What advice do you have your colleague boxers at home who may wonder how you got this opportunity and how um, what they should do? I know we've spoken a little bit about it, but as a boxer, what do you have to say to them? What should they do to get opportunities like this? All right. In all things, I would like to thank my manager. Uh, in all things, uh, having a right and uh, having a right guardian like him. Uh, you can be a boxer, uh, you can be a, a boxer, good boxer, or both a good fighter. When you have a good handle like Mr. Edwin, you go far because um, it teaches me a lot and I learn a lot also from him, guides me in all things. So 
with the words of advice and i've also determined and i've also made my mindset that whatever it says i'm, I'm just doing it focusing on myself you know uh, i'm putting my best in all things so everything will come from your manager if you have a good guardian like him i'm not saying you should take care of everyone but i mean if you have a manager just pay attention to your manager and i always pray that every manager will have the kind of mindset that mr edwin have in the game that will take a boxer far and the coach also is there also saying a lot for me you know putting me in good shapes so my team everyone should focus on his team and then god will make it for for them hey I, yesterday we had um was it yesterday on on sunday uh, on another program that I was a panelist, we spoke about exactly what you spoke about, which is the synergy, the positive synergy, energy between the, the boxer, the trainer, the manager, sometimes um, the promotions. But but you've spoke about all the people that made this happen. And then I just want to emphasize it that as a boxer, you have to have a good relationship with your manager. The manager drives it. The manager is the administrator. He gives you the opportunities. So you have to have a good relationship. So I'm not surprised that Mohammed is, is thanking, is full of praise for his manager. And of course, the manager can get you to where you need to get to. But if you don't take your training serious and you don't put in the work, you are not going to go anywhere. And that is why he also thanked his coach. Um, and his trainer for giving him what he needs to do come Saturday. These are very important. Um, um, uh, manager also, Edwin. I also like to come in uh, for. So, uh, it's a manager also. He's doing a lot of great works. He's also a technical director for the for for me also as well in the ring. Um, his coach also is there doing his best for me also as a head coach. We compare together as team. It's a manager. It's not focusing only on administration, but it's focusing on also in my ring, also anything that is a more this. We need to do it like this. We need to go it like this. Also, he has been a technical director also for for the whole team. So he's doing a, a great work. So you you got you got the ultimate A team. So <laughs> I, I I wish all boxers get get, get your team. <laughs> um. <laughs> Edwin, um, I, I should say that um, your 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 boxer or your, your boxer was full of praise for you. What what advice would you give to managers out there who I, I don't know how long you have been in the game, but you you look relatively young, yeah. and who may there are some managers that have been in the business for a long time and have not had this one time opportunity. I mean, the America, whether you like it or not, is the mecca of boxing. Yes, the UK is doing their thing, but America is the mecca of boxing. And so young in uh, Mohammed's career to get this opportunity, um, you had to put in some work. Someone had to see the work that you are doing to avail the, the availability of such an opportunity to you. What do you say to the managers like you coming up or that and in Ghana or elsewhere? Uh, what, what Some of the things that they need to do to get such an opportunity. Yeah. All right. So... Um... I think that at the end of the day, it's the boxer who risks his life in the ring. We have we hear countless stories of boxers who pass away after a fight, boxers who sacrifice their life to put food on their plates uh, for their families. So as a manager, I think your responsibility is to always put the boxer first. Um, and that's what I've always strived for, to always put Mohammed first in every, everything that I do. I always seek his approval even though uh, it may seem as if um he's a younger person or whatnot I, I i always open up to him let him understand what the situations are be very straightforward and frank with him and indeed just put the boxer first think of the boxer first before your own um, um interest put the boxer first and uh, i believe everything will work out fine so you are saying managers shouldn't be thinking about cashing in right away on boxes uh, we we discussed this at length, and I just want to take the opportunity to emphasize it. I'm pretty sure that this is 
any manager like of your caliber is not thinking about a big payday early in Mohammed's career. Because you, if you invest, keep investing, keep investing your time, your energy, technical abilities, whatever, he gets to the big money zone. That's where we all want to be. Not his first fight in the United States. I just have a question for um, 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 Coach. Coach, yeah. Uh, what do you say to your colleague trainers in Ghana who probably are looking at you right now and be like, how did you do it this early in this boxer's career? What do you tell the trainers also? We've talked about boxes. We've talked about managers. What do you tell trainers? They have to focus in training very well the relationship about the bosses. To do everything, the boss is a teamwork. If you have a relationship with boss correctly, you will go far. Everything you have a chance to talk to the boss. If you are annoying, you just ask a patient to talk to the boss. If boss do a training, he's tired. If you talk, anything to a boxer, he will know you, but you have to exercise patience. Don't say anything to him badly. Then he come to annoy you. But I want to tell every boxer in Ghana to focus in training, dedicated, respect, coaches. If you are strong, like my taxi or something, you know, get uh, this thing, good promoter, you know, reach far. You have to focus and respect. Then you go. I, I, I agree. I, I I agree because, hey, I know a lot of talented boxers from Ghana who currently, their career are dwindling. It's all about teamwork. It's all about relationships. So as the coach is saying, you have to have a good relationship with your boxer. I mean, this yeah. what you see on this screen here is the perfect trilogy. A good, positive attitude between these three who you take the team. The father, the son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't, I don't disagree. It looks like that. And uh, come Saturday, I hope that the 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 uh, your your the God blesses uh, us and brings us the win. Amen. Now, I want to just thank you very much, the three of you, especially Mohammed, for your time. I know you have been um, in the gym, um, practicing, training for this Saturday, and I wish you all the best this weekend. Thank you so very much, also. And uh, I would like to say this to my fans, you know, everyone can go on to our website and then follow us on IG, Mohamed Ni Ayukwe Aite. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and everywhere. you can <laughs> everywhere. And you can also go to our website, www.winbasepromotion.com. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and you can also go to our boxing club gym also on Instagram, everywhere to reach us. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, HTV Boxing fans, for watching. Uh, as always, we try to bring you the best one-on-ones. Please share and subscribe this and follow us if this is your first time. You may also leave your comments about this interview below. This is one-on-one on HTV, and my name is Opie.